I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on exponential functions. In this video, we'll understand how do we write equation from the given graph. You can look into this playlist for other related questions. In case you want to learn from me, you can always send an email on the address given. Also check our latest videos on the website globalmathinstitute.com. We'll consider two examples here. You need to find the equation from the graph of the given exponential function. Well, the question here is, following graphs represent, line, uh, represent the transformation of the function y equals to 3 to the power of x. So in this case, we have parent function, which is 3 to the power of x, right? Write an equation for each of them in the form of y equals to a 3 to the power of kx plus p plus q. So that becomes the transform equation which you need to write for these two given graphs. I'd like you to pause the video, copy this question and then answer. Let's take up the very first example. You will also understand from the given graphs that I have marked two points on the graph. So it is very important to identify two points on the graph. In the test, normally, you will notice that these points are not given, right? Sometimes they are not given. So you need to identify them, correct? Also, remember the key points. Uh, for example, in this particular case, when we are talking about the, the function, which is y equals to 3 to the power of x, in that case, what are the key points? Well, there are two key points which you should definitely look into, and these are the values. Let's say one point here is, let me write down this key point as 0, and the base 3 in this case, right? So that will be, I'll say, let's say point A, let me mark here. And let's say the other point here is the value of the function when x is 1, it is equal to, oh, sorry, when x is 0, anything to the power of 0 is 1. When x is 1, then anything to the power of 1 is the base itself. Since we have y equals to 3 to the power of x. So the key points in this case will be 0, 1, and 1, 3. You can also compare your graph with these key points and see where have they shifted, right? And how have they been transformed? That will help you to find the transformation, correct? So that is key for answering these questions. Now let's see the solution of the very first one, where we have the graph of the function which is kind of reflected, right, and translated. So if you notice this particular graph, which is shown here, it has been reflected. So the original graph is what you see here, correct? So this is the, the original graph. Let me mark this original graph once again. So that is the graph of the function 3 to the power of x, correct? Now, if you compare, what has happened? This graph, 3 to the power of x, has been reflected on the y-axis. So that is the first transformation. So, so what we have done here is transformation, so which is reflected on x-axis, correct? And then it is translated two units up. Now, how many units? This is the point 5. Okay. 5 units up. So these are the two transformations which you can clearly observe. Now, starting from here, you could write down some values in the given equation and then consider points and then consider points. So these are the steps which you should be following 
to get the equation. So let's begin. So we are writing the equation in the form of a times 3 to the power of kx plus p, right? Now, sometimes it is better to write x plus p in the bracket, plus q. Now, q is basically the vertical translation, right? You know, q is vertical translation. which in this case clearly is 5. So, so we know that the function has been translated 5 units up, and therefore q value should be 5. Clear? So we can write in our equation 5 for q. Now let us consider the given points, right? So now consider the points. We know the a value is negative since it is going down, right? And we also know that a is less than 0, correct? Since it is going down. Reflected on the x-axis means a is less than 0. Okay. Uh, so we'll just check that. Now, consider the point which is a, 0, 4. So we are considering this point, a, 0, 4. Now remember, the key point The key point is 0, 1. 0, 1 is the key point. Now, in this particular case, since the x value has not changed, you can infer that the value of p is 0. Therefore, we are writing p equals to 0. You see that. So P is going to be 0 since the graph is not translated horizontally, right? No horizontal translation. Do you understand? By comparing the points, you can write that. So P is equal to 0. Now, considering P equals to 0 in this equation, and then A is 0, 4, Replace x with 0, y with 4, and solve for a. Do you see that? So you can substitute these values here. So we know x is equal to 0, y equals to 4, and p is equal to 0. When you substitute these values here, what do you get? You can solve this equation, and you get the value of a as equal to minus 1. So as expected, a is less than 0 and it is going to be minus 1, correct? So we get the value of a. You can substitute the value of a as minus 1, and then the second point, which is half 2, right? So let me call this as point b. So now we are considering the point 0 0.5 is as good as writing half, correct? So, substituting 2 for y and x equals to half, we can now find the value of k, right? Find k. So, you get the value 2 equals to minus 3k to the power of, uh, 3 to the power of k times 0 0.5, which is half. p we know is 0 plus 5. And solving, we get 3 to the power of half k as 5 minus 2 which is equal to 3, which is 3 to the power of 1. And that means that half k is equal to 3, right? So k is equal to 2. So that is how we do get the answer, right? So 3 to the power of half k is 3. So half k is, we can write like this, half k is equal to one and so k is equals to one so this is what you get by comparing coefficients exponents correct so when you compare the exponents you can see that k times half is equal to one right 
and therefore you get the answer k equals to 2. So that is how we should be solving. So I hope the steps are absolutely clear. Let's go through them once again. First is observe. transformation that helps you to give some key value. In this case, we observe that it is reflected on the x-axis. That means that the a value is negative, right? It has been translated five units up very clearly. The horizontal asymptote is y equals to five. And this horizontal asymptote y equals to five is the value of q. So we substituted q as equal to 5 in our equation. And now you can use the test points A and B. When you use test points A and B, you can find the other parameters from this particular equation. Important observation is also to see that the key point 0, 1 has been reflected and then translated 5 units up. There is no horizontal translation. And that gives you the value of p as equal to 0. It's a very key observation. And then using the points, we can find the value of a and the value of k. Perfect. Now let's see the next example. Here, we're looking, I like you to actually pause the video, look into this particular graph, and then try to find the equation. So again, from this graph, we'll see what kind of a transformation has taken place. So you can clearly see that the horizontal asymptote is what? Is y equals to minus 4. Now that clearly means that the value of q should be minus 4, correct? So that is the first thing. So the horizontal asymptote is y equals to minus 4, and therefore q is minus 4. So in the given equation, We'll replace q with minus 4. Then we also observe that the graph has been reflected on the y-axis. That means that the k value is negative. So I've taken k as minus 1 in this case. We'll work with stretches and compression by calculating the value of a, right? So we took k as minus 1. So putting k as minus 1, we get now our equation as y equals to a times. 3 to the power of minus x plus p plus p minus 4. So that becomes the transformation equation for us. Now we can actually use the points and the transformation to calculate the missing parameters. It is a good practice to factor out negative so that we can write the transformation from the parent function to the transformed function. In this case, if the equation is y equals to a, 3 to the power of minus x minus p minus 4, then the coordinate points x and y will be transformed. The x values will become minus x plus p, correct? And the y values will be a y minus 4, right? We are given two points on the graph, and these two points are a is minus 3 minus 1, and b is minus 2 minus 3. So these are the two points given to us. We also know the key points, right? So the key points for us are zero, one. So for the parent function three to the power of x, the key points are when you put x as zero, anything to the power of zero is one. And when you put x as one, you get one and three. These two key points looking into the position of the graph represents the given points b and a. So see, how do they get transformed and apply the transformation which we just learned, correct? So in this particular case, considering the first set of points, which is from 0, 1 to minus 2, minus 3, we're talking about this point. In that case, the Transformation is from x values to minus x plus p. So minus x plus p should be equal to the x value of the transform function, which is minus 2. That gives you the p value of minus 2. 
Now let's check the y value of minus 3. y value of minus 3 is equal to a y minus 4. y value originally was 1. So we substitute 1 there and find the value of a. Rearranging a is 1 and therefore the function is y equals to 3 to the power of minus x plus 2 within brackets minus 4. So you get your transform equation. Perfect. Now in this particular case you can now use the second point to check the result. So verify whether this equation is correct or not with the second point which is minus 3 minus 1. Substitute minus 3 and minus 1 in the equation. So we have substituted minus 3 for x and let's find what do we get. We do get minus 1. Since x to the power of minus within bracket minus 3 plus 2, that will result into x to the power of 3 to the power of 1. And then minus 4, that is 3 minus 4 is minus 1. So we do get the point. So check has been done and we verify that this equation is correct. And that is how you can write the exponential equation from the graph. So I hope the steps are absolutely clear. Again, it is important to focus on two things. And these two things are number one, transformations, right? So one is transformations. And second is key points. They help you to find the equation from the graph. So I hope that really helps you to understand a simple method of finding equation from the given graph. Feel free to write your suggestions. Thanks for your time and all the best.